Welcome to our board meeting. Uh, we open our meeting early today at recording in progress. Matter to go before guests. So, could I have a motion to go into executive session for a student matter? I move uh, to go into executive session for student matters uh, floor. Should we uh, include anyone else besides the board in that executive session? Yes, please include Jen. To include Jen Miller Arsenal. Yeah. Could I have a second? Second. A second. Okay, I'm going to give it to Dennis. Or so, so uh, Jonas and Dennis. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. The break room is open for you. Please go in. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to our school board meeting. Uh, sorry, we're a few minutes behind. It took a little longer than we expected, but thank you for joining us uh, today. I think I see we have some members of the public. I'm going to give the board, we have been meeting for the past hour and a half. I'm going to give the board uh, four minutes and we'll be back at uh, six. Yes. Can we, can we make oh, yeah, a vote? Yeah, let's do that. Let's do that. Yeah, sorry. Let's go ahead oh. and... Yep, so I, I move uh, to accept the administration's recommendations regarding the two student matters we discussed during executive session. Second. Thank you. Okay, second by Dennis. Daniel. Daniel, sorry, Daniel. Okay, okay. it's a little, a little stuffy. Okay. All right, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries. Thank you, everybody. So it's six ten. I'm gonna give us four minutes, literally, and come back at six fourteen so that we can get started at six fifteen. Okay. Thank you. Okay, everybody. It's six fourteen. Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'll wait for. Welcome, Lisa. Are you all set? Do you have everything you need? Great. All right, so let's welcome our guests. Are there any public comments? And just a quick reminder that we have time limit and it's strictly enforced, And but we want to hear from the public. So if you have anything to share with us, please raise your hand. Okay, I don't see any hands up. Mark, can you confirm that that's my your recollection too, or Jen? I don't see any. I don't see any. Okay. Hands up. All right, so it's not just me and my phone. Yeah, I, I agree. I don't see any. The business. We have a. Uh, Quite an agenda in front of us. So, any agenda revisions? We have one little one, and wanted to make sure that you guys noticed that policy C14 was part of the package on page 49. Did you guys notice that? Yeah. Oh, good. Okay. Just want we just wanted to make sure that you saw that. Any other agenda revisions that you guys think we missed? Or okay, I don't see any heads knowing, and I don't see all the screens on. So, okay, let's move on. Uh, to our reports. So student reports, I don't know if Maya or Anna are here today. We already gave them their award. Well, Anna, who had her last meeting with us and is gonna graduate on Friday. So I don't see anybody here. Am I missing that too or no? Okay. So Jen, okay. you wanna get started? Sure. So the first report tonight is the COVID-19 update. And, um, and for the end of the year, Maria wrote a report. It's in your packet. Um, and I think the, the biggest thing I'll highlight is um, just the sheer number of cases that we have experienced this year. So, and that number uh, 661 was as of last week, as of uh, about an hour or two ago when I last checked, it's now 672. So even this week, we're experiencing more and more cases. Um, 
we obviously went through a lot of change. I wrote uh, months ago about uh, that Greek philosopher quote, nothing endures but change. And that was absolutely our experience over the course of this year with um, changing guidance and changing protocols. Um, we are well poised next year to distribute tests and implement the testing program. Um, those of you who want to come to central office one of these days we have boxes and boxes of tests all in the conference room and up on file cabinets so um, we have a nice set of pet of um, tests one thing that maria and i realized we um forgot to include here is the vaccine clinics and maria if you are here i'm not sure if she's i know she's on the meeting but i'm not sure if she's right there at the computer yay yeah. Um, Maria, you want to talk a little bit about the vaccine clinic since we forgot to put that in there? Uh, sure. So we've done, I think we tallied up 10 vaccine clinics um, this year. Uh, two of them we did in collaboration with Shaw's um, and the rest were all done with Waterbury Ambulance, which was contracted through the state. Um, so we just held five clinics at Berlin Elementary in the last two weeks. Um, because of the boosters that were available for the 5 to 11 age range. And um, those were very successful. Um, and then we did uh, two clinics at Doty um, in January, right after break, while the, um, oh, wait, we did one before break, didn't we, in December? That feels like so long ago. Um, December, and then again in January, um, when the 5 to 11s first became eligible. And then again, at the beginning of the year, we did two clinics at U32 for ages 12 and up. Um, so we did provide some good services to the public um, that I'm really proud that we were able to offer. Thanks, Maria. And I think the other thing I would um, underscore just for the, the community at large as well is, is the piece that Maria put in there about um, well, Maria herself, I'll say, and our school nurses in general, just um, really just being champions um, the whole year, um, taking whatever faced them, uh, working hard, often needing to share unpleasant news with, with families directly while still, you know, maintaining um, a good sense of relationship with everybody overall. So, um, it has been a hugely busy year. We're grateful for uh, Maria and our school nurses. And I would invite any questions that you all might have regarding the, um, the report. Diane? Um, I don't have any questions. I just wanna say thank you for the detail. And I also just appreciate, um, again, the communication that's been going on, the, uh, um, treading that path that made sense for our students and for our staff um, and just following that, that lead of science. So thank you all for that work. Thank you, Diane. I think seeing the clapping hand from Lindy, I think, you know, on behalf of all the board, Maria, Jen, and all of the nurses and everybody, you guys have really championed for our kids this year and it's really, commendable so thank you so much from all of us and thank you for this you know the letter was really clear and, and makes our work easy thank you um seeing no other hands up uh, do you want to move into our summer food availability jen sure and this will just be quick i wrote this in the community letter last week and i I just wanted to also uh, share it with everybody verbally as well. Um, the summer meal program that we are able to operate in Washington Central will take place between the 5th of July and the 5th of August. It is free universal meals for any students um, 18 years old and younger. Um, again, Berlin Elementary School breakfast between 8.30 and 9 and lunch is available between 11.30 and 12.30. And, um, and there likely are other places in central Vermont um, that are also gonna be sites. This is the only one that we're operating for our school system, um, but we can uh, attempt um, as we find out more information if necessary to disseminate that to the community as well this summer. 
Thank you, Jen. Any questions from our members on that? Okay, so let's move into our continuous improvement plan. Uh, remembers the, everybody, we had our nice community meeting last couple of weeks ago about it. Uh, I'm wondering if we could start with a motion, if that is. Thank you, Kari. Yeah, I'd like to make a motion uh, that we approve the district continuous improvement plan. Thank you, Kari. Could I have a second? I'll second it. Thank you, Lindy. So move by Kari, second by Lindy, and now we can move into discussion. Jen, do you want to comment? Sure. I, I'm happy to just share a highlight or two from the memo. I tried to streamline this for you all. So for the sake of efficiency, we have a lot happening tonight. So the memo highlights the process, again, the, the key dates, the desire to have coherence in all of our plans. Um, I shared with you that 48 people ended up completing the feedback form. The vast majority of those 48 were staff members after we did the presentations on the 25th of May. A couple of community members um, commented, but very few. I wrote for you um, some of those key themes. I want to publicly thank Michelle Sepka and Kat Thayer. They were the ones who really went through the data um, carefully, too, just to support me in getting this work done as well. Um, so again, really a, a need to be more explicit about um, student engagement, to be a little more specific regarding behaviors in general. There were definitely a lot of concerns that um, there were inequities and issues pre-pandemic. And so that possibly going back to pre-pandemic levels of staffing might not be wise. And so uh, we were more thoughtful in that approach. And I want to say, um, you know, again, we all talk about budgeting being a year round process. During the budget process, we were really clear that um, some of those staffing levels have been increased because we have the ARP ESSER funds. And so we'll just need to be thoughtful about that and figure out where we want to head in the year and years to come when that federal source of funds is no longer available. Um, also, just a, a little bit of question around um, around some timeline. We're doing some of that work internally here as we're planning professional learning um, and a desire along those lines to be a little bit more um, explicit in our connection um, to the importance of professional learning. So we took all of that feedback into consideration and the feedback that we received from you all at the forum and have done some revisions. The key revisions, if you go to page um, eight in your packet, um, we, you'll know in those goals, the safe and healthy schools goal, a little more explicit mention of student engagement, and then more specificity in those prioritized strategies and change ideas. And um, sort of a, a, we stepped away from the idea of uh, the pre-pandemic staff level restoration piece. Um, but more explicit reference to professional learning as well. And then I would point out on page nine, which is where the academic achievement goal is, um, that that goal also, and I said this, I think, during the presentation a couple weeks ago, is aligned with the FY23 budget parameter that you all have set, which I think, again, adds coherence to the system. And then we tweaked that so that there's more explicit reference to professional learning. Um, and I will preview for you a commitment that we've made to that end is that um, we will be doing some book groups across the entire school system last year. We had some success doing that when we all read Onward together um, about emotional resilience and well being and educators. And this time around, we um, have six, we had 10 books that we we're giving our staff members a choice to choose one. And then a core group of us this summer will be organizing some professional learning. The books are all related to areas um, uh, where students have been historically marginalized. So issues of equity regarding race, um, some gender and gender identity, um, uh, neurodiversity. So those titles are out and that work is um, actively being planned right now. Um, and then the final thing I'll say for you, just so you understand it, is that the equity supports piece was just cutting and pasting 
of the goal of the academic achievement goal, but for each school and the LEA for the category in which it was um, each school or the LEA was identified for needing being identified for equity supports. So that was just to meet that particular require, requirement, the formatting necessity. And that's it, Floor. Thank you, Jen. Any other discussion from board members or questions before we move into voting? I don't see anything. I, I just wanna also publicly thank you, Jen, for putting this presentation together for us and also thank the board members. You guys have been really engaged. Engagement was really great. Everybody contributed a lot and thank you to the administrators for you know uh, getting that input into the the plan so with all of all of those in favor with the motion as read by carrie and second uh, i have it right here by lindy uh, say aye. 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 aye 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 okay okay any opposed Hearing none, the motion carries. And this is for the record. Natasha had to step out, but give me written authorization to approve the continuous improvement plan. Okay, thank you. So, motion carries unanimously. All right, let's move into board operations, uh, staff appreciation. I'm going to open this up for Diane and Lindy. Yeah, so again, I think the theme tonight has really been appreciation for all for all staff and for um, <clears throat> all the work that has happened this year. Uh, we haven't been able to, it's been one of those things that suddenly crazily, it's, you know, June 15th, but um, I would just suggest that board members consider sending a letter, an email uh, expressing appreciation for a great year and wishing uh, opportunities to re-energize and reinvigorate over the summer. Um, and, and again, words aren't enough, but they're what we have right now. Thank you, Diane. Okay, let's, let's go to 6.2 and that's the school board retreat. Uh, so I was able to share with the steering committee and I told the steering committee that I'll share this uh, with you today. So we, we, we went ahead and we're going to have the retreat uh, in uh, August 8th and from 4 to 8. Most of you have already replied to the invite. I know it doesn't work for most, for some of you, not all, but, uh, but uh, what I had to share with you today is that we, we're going to, I have so Phil from the Vermont School Association will facilitate a 90 minute discussion and we'll provide an overview so that we we were trying to find a common uh, place with uh, with Megan has been part of this too with the steering committee to make sure that this is meaningful for us so provide an overview of improving school board effectiveness and a balanced governance approach and how we can um, the board student, um, how the board influenced student achievement too. Uh, so, so that is sort of the overall theme. So, what you were, uh, he's done a balanced approach, which is a book that actually he wrote with two other uh, scholars. And what we had talked about was that from September 7th, which is September 8th, which is our retreat through June 7th of 2023, we will use part of our first Wednesday. We can decide that as, as a board and we will facilitate board learning discussion and we will walk through this book so that will help the board members that can, attain, can attend this retreat. We would all have this common uh, language and include how boards affect student learning and how they need to know what they need to know and do to provide effective governance and oversight to support and improve achievement, achievement, which is uh, what we all have been talking about. So that's the update that we have. Uh, the suggestion from the steering committee also was that we can decide at the end of that meeting if we want to move forward with doing this uh, on, on a monthly basis, right? So you don't need to make that decision today, but I just wanted to share that information with with you today, okay? 
Any, any questions? Oh, Maggie, you have your hand up. Yes, question is, would it be possible to record her presentation for those of us who are not available to attend that board meeting in August? So when we do get together and begin <clears throat> that conversation and study in September that we're actually on the same page. So I, be, because it's a retreat, Maggie, I'm, I, I'm not sure that recording might, might be the best, but I know that there, there would be a way for, for you to, to, to catch up and it would just be, we would discuss just the first chapter, but let's, let's think about how we can make that. I want the retreat to be sure that people can be, you know, uh, not feel like they're recorded. Is that, do you, do you understand what I mean? Like, so it just, it's not a board meeting, it's a retreat. Yeah, maybe I misunderstood. I thought she was giving a presentation and I would assume there'd be like Q&A afterwards. I guess I, I'm- No, 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 format. it's a, it, yeah, no, okay. it, the re, it, it would be, it would be a retreat. After that, we would have uh, every, every month is the proposal. Yeah. We would have um, a continuous learning together yeah, and and we can frame that however it best serves the the board but you would have the information so you wouldn't be behind because you would have that first chapter to to the review and we would be i would be happy to fill you in in the board conversation too okay yeah again i okay. my what i thought i was hearing was that this <clears throat> that there's going to be a presentation as part of the board retreat like a, a lecture um so that's my misunderstanding from what i was hearing yeah, so 90 minute board discussion uh, on that. And there would be, an, there is going to be a 90 minute discussion also with Pietro Lynn. So the board is, it, the retreat is broken into two, into two pieces. Uh, but you would have, uh, uh, you would have the information for both, but we're not going to record the retreat. Okay, I see your thumbs up. Okay, let's move into superintendent evaluation. So, Kari, do we need a motion? Sorry, I, I, I don't know what, I'm, I'm not sure. I thought we were just sort of recapping the process here. Remind me for oh. the purpose of this. Yeah, so but where we got to do two things. One, recap the purpose, but we also have to authorize uh, the chair to sign the evaluation and to accept the evaluation. Oh, oh okay. So the, that, that is the motion I was looking for, but we can start by recapping the process and then yeah. uh, however yeah, this, you want to. Yeah. So this would just be for, for any guests. Um, so just to um, catch you up on what the board has been doing, we are conducting a super an eva performance evaluation of our interim superintendent. Jen and we used the um, Vermont School Board Association's model is based on a rubric of professional standards. And we surveyed ourselves, uh, Jen provided a self-evaluation and we also took input from the leadership team, administrators. And um, tonight we um, looked at a compilation of that, those survey results, had a discussion and now our evaluation committee will compile those results and um, debrief with Jen next week and produce a summary document. So I would make a motion to authorize the, um, the board chair to sign that summary document to be placed in um, Jen's um, personnel file eventually. Thank you, Second. Carrie. Thank you, Dennis. Second. All right. Any other comments or discussion from board members? Seeing none, all of those in favor, uh, please say aye. 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 Thank you. Any opposed? Hearing none, motion carries. Okay. 6.4, monitoring calendar. So I'm gonna let Jen and Kari lead this. <laughs> So this was a request that um, that you all made to put this monitoring piece together because we had some monitoring reports, some big ones from the Education Quality Committee and from the Finance Committee. And when Suzanne and I were working sort of independently and in putting this stuff together, uh, there was a desire to make sure that 
we weren't doubling up on any one month so that the board had a ton of information to process in any one month. So Suzanne and I looked at what we had originally proposed and there wasn't any overlap and we were feeling great about that. And then we realized one thing that we hadn't fully factored in was that you historically um, receive and process the previous fiscal year's audit report um, in December of each year. So we made just a little bit of an adjustment from what we had talked about at the Ed Quality Committee meeting. I will make that, I'll swap out two months on the Ed Quality Committee calendar. The topics will remain the same, but this way we felt like this flows in a way that, um, that makes sense in terms of the, the workflow and the business that's happening in the school district and allows us to share with you some big chunks of important information in a timely ma uh, manner. So this was the proposal and I just wanted to be completely transparent to let you know it's slightly different than what we had talked about at, um, at the Quality Committee meeting. And that, that's it. I don't know if there are questions or comments. Thank you, Jen. A any questions or comments from board members? Just want to say thank you for putting it together. I just want to say that this um, this is a good step for us. This kind of you know is part of our calendar for the coming year. And just as we're talking about budgeting year round, we're also monitoring our performance financially, academically, um, year round. And, and so it really kind of puts our work into um, focus. I think. Thank you. Thank you, Carrie. All right. So with that, yeah, thank you again. Uh, let's move into the finance committee part. So let's, sorry, just getting my stuff ready. I have a much smaller table than I usually have for my post-its. So hold on a minute. Welcome, Suzanne. Welcome, Chris. And I'm going to lean on my finance committee today to get this done and on Suzanne and on Chris. So please jump in if I am not making sense. So uh, the monthly reflection, uh, I'm gonna, uh, because it's our last meeting of the year, Suzanne, I was gonna let you talk a little bit about it. Uh, it's just for information for the board. So if board members have questions, uh, I won't have her talk about it, but if I don't see any hands up, I'll just let Suzanne do a quick review. It's always helpful for the public too. Okay, go ahead and do a quick review, Suzanne. Uh, good evening, everybody. Um, the reflection this month, I wanted to talk to you all about the visit from RHR Smith, our auditing firm, and uh, some of the recommendations that they provided us with when they did the pre-audit in May. Um, one of the recommendations was that we perform a physical inventory of our food service, uh, our, our food on hand more often than once a year. Uh, currently we do it at the end of the fiscal year. Um, so we've got plans in place to do it at the end of the break before winter and also at, uh, right before summer break. So twice a year instead of just once a year. And the second recommendation was that we uh, have two signers on all journal entries. Currently, we have a preparer and not necessarily a uh, assigned reviewer. Um, most of our journal entries are uh, one of us on the team, whether it be Matt, Virginia, or myself, identifying something that needs to be journal entried, and Matt prepares the journal entry in the system, uh, but we don't have a physical. Uh, signature in place. So we've got uh, that process implementation going now. And uh, beyond those two recommendations, which by the way are not mandatory, they're just uh, intended to strengthen controls and systems in, in the district. Um, they, the auditors felt that we are well on our way to being ready for the audit in August. So we're, we're pretty pleased with that. And then the next Thing on the reflections report was just to provide you with uh, a timeline of our month end or our year end uh, process. 
I felt like it was one thing to say that we're incredibly busy in June, but then another to really show you all of the key dates that happen, um, specifically payroll and all of the events that occur through payroll because we have summer paychecks, uh, final paychecks, and first paycheck of the fiscal year, and the timing of everything is so key and so important. So I wanted to show you all that. Uh, and then in an effort to increase our efficiency, the central office uh, has been documenting even more procedures than we have in the past. We, we have numerous procedures in writing, but we're just going through and trying to make sure that we have everything documented, well documented. So uh, some of the first procedures we've started with are grants and uh, HR. So we're pretty excited about getting that in writing. And I think it's going to make it um, make operations more efficient. And also provided you with a finance committee agenda timeline for FY23, so that we can start thinking ahead about what we're going to be looking at next year and when we'll be looking at it. Thank you, Suzanne. That was wonderful. Uh, any questions from board members? Otherwise, uh, let's, could I have uh, a motion to award a revenue anticipation note and reinvestment bid? I move Oops. that the board approve the revenue anticipation note for an amount not to exceed $8,313,020 and investment bid with Community Bank NA and authorize the board chair to sign the loan documents on behalf of the board. Thank you, Ursula. Could I have a second? A second. second. Uh, Diane, second. All those in favor, please say, signify by saying aye. 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 All right. Any opposed? And I see the checks. Hearing none, the motion carries. Thank you. Uh, then we have award the property liability and workers' compensation insurance bid. I move that the board award the property liability and workers' compensation insurance contract for the district wide coverage for July 1st, 2022 to June 30th, 2023 to Hitchcock and Boardman slash Liberty Mutual for $191,513. Thank you, Ursula. Could I have a second? Second. Jonas, okay, thank you. Any questions and discussion here? No, okay, we had a lot of discussion as the facility, as the facility, I always call it facilities, as the finance committee, uh, as a finance committee. So I just wanted to thank here, uh, both Suzanne and, and Jen to, for going into this adventure. It was not something that, it was something that we've been wanting to do for years as a district and, and, and compare uh, why we were not part of this bit. This was a very accurate comparison. It's information that was really valuable for us as board members, especially board members that have been on this forever. So, uh, so thank you. Uh, Carrie. Just curious, does anybody know our workers' comp mod factor? Yeah. The rate we are I don't have it off the top of my head, but I probably have it in this packet and can find it in a few minutes. Or, or you could email it to me. It's just a curiosity. I will get that to you, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Carrie. Okay. I don't see any other hands up. So all those in favor of the motion as read by Ursula and second by Jonas, please say aye. 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 I see your hand, Dennis, I'm assuming that's your vote. Okay. So motion carries unanimously. And moving right down to, very exciting, adopt our capital improvement plan, page 23. I move that the board adopt the final draft of the capital improvement plan included in the packet. Thank you, Ursula. A second. Oh, come on. God, second. 
<laughs> oh, oh, sorry. It's it's a little delayed. Maybe it's my computer. So it, that was you, Jonas. Yeah. Okay. Any questions? Any comments? Again, just really thanking the entire team that put this together. I'm looking at you, Chris. You always come to our meetings too. So <laughs> Suzanne and everybody. And so, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 All right, I see all eyes. Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries. Okay. And then we move to the very exciting parking lot project and budget. So could I, I have a motion for that? Yeah, go ahead. I move that the board authorize the superintendent to engage engineering ventures to complete bidding for the U32 parking lot repaving sidewalk replacement and driveway circulation improvements for an amount not to exceed $2,090,354. Thank you, Ursula. And can I have a second? Second. Thank you, Diane. Okay. Any questions? Chris is here and happy to answer any questions or give you a brief description. Diane. Wow, that's, I mean, it's a lot of area, but that's, that's <laughs> expensive. Um, do we have an anticipation of how long this will last? I mean, there's no guarantees, but what are we thinking for maintenance and life? That's actually, that's a good question. And I don't believe that's even come up in conversation yet. Um, I would expect, I believe the last time that was done, um, it was 20 years ago or more. So I would, I would expect that we'd at least get that out of it, but um, I don't have an exact a good answer for that. That's the first time anybody's even brought that up, Diane. So, but I can, but I can ask engineering ventures and and get that number. Thank hopefully you, about fifth. Hopefully about fifty years. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. We, uh, you know, in construction, we said for parking and the via is twenty five to thirty five, and depending on maintenance. It, but yeah. so I don't know. Yeah. Um, oh, I was just going to comment that it was it, the parking lot was put in in the year 2000. Um, so was that the last? That must have been the last. It hasn't been done since then. 22. So, yeah. That'd give you an estimate. See, if they'd listened to me back then, my senior year, we would have just left it a beautiful lawn and we wouldn't need to repave it. <laughs> <laughs> Good point. Yeah. There's a there's a lot of um, there's a lot of sub base work that has to go in to, to it too. There's a lot of um, sections that really need to they need to dig down uh, quite a bit and put you know specific types of gravel. Um, not everywhere, but in certain areas, I have all those details. If if uh, anyone so wishes to review that, thank you, Chris. Yeah. I don't see any other hands up. So all those in favor of uh, accepting the motion as read by Ursula and second by Diane, please signify by saying aye. 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 Okay, any opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries, thank you. Okay, this mo the proposal to transfer general fund balance to the capital reserve fund the finance committee had a recommendation. Ursula, would you mind? You're, you're muted, sorry. I move that the board approve transferring 1,500,000 from the general fund reserve to the capital reserve fund. Thank you, Ursula. Could I have a second? Second. Thank you, Daniel. Okay, questions, discussion? There's gotta be some questions. <laughs> no? Okay, I'm sure. Okay, I don't see any questions. I'm, I'm just, yeah, I'm, I'm glad that it was that clear. It, this is a big step for us and we, it's, it's setting this precedent is really, it's really great and we need it yeah, to continue to, you know, be, and mindful of uh, about our buildings and our capital fund and continue to move forward with the division of our capital improvement plan that we just approved. So 
Thank you, everybody. Uh, so all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Great. Thank you. I hear all eyes and see a couple of checks. So let's any oppose. Hearing none, the race unanimous. That is the end of our first part, and then we'll move into policy. Hi, Floor. Good evening, everyone. Um, and Floor, are you a little sketchy? Can you hear me okay? Yeah, I can hear you. I'm going to stop my video and see if you can hear me better. Okay. Okay, great. Thanks. Um, so I have uh, one comment that I heard pretty clearly the need to develop a school choice policy. Um, and so we will, we will have, um, we'll work on that policy committee will work on that. We'll solicit input from the administration and uh, have some, you know, I think the first step as well would be to have just a general discussion at the board as to what you would like to see in a school policy, uh, a school choice policy um, be, and, and whether um, it should be broad choice or narrow choice. Um, just because as one district uh, that the, what a school choice policy really could include could be very broad and allowing uh, more fluid movement um, or not. Uh, so we should get, a, the policy committee should get a sense from the board as to um, what the board would like to see uh, in that regard. Um, but for tonight, we have first reading of policy, um, which would be scheduled for adoption in August. And it's uh, C8, the pupil privacy rights policy. Um, has there been any, is there any comment or questions about this particular policy? Hearing none, we will have it back for you in, in August um, for um, approval. Uh, second up is uh, C1, student educational records policy. Any questions on this? Okay. Um, and our final policy for tonight is second reading for a policy to be adopted, prevention of employment. Chris, Chris, sorry to interrupt. We had C14 in there also for a first reading. It just didn't make it on the agenda. That was the revision that, um, that Floor stated earlier. That's okay. Do a quick first reading of that one. Sure. Thank you very much. Thanks. So we have first reading for C14 as well. Section 504 and 88 grievance and protocol for students and staff. And the policy committee went through this on several occasions, um, soliciting input from a variety of, of um, stakeholders. And so we're looking for any comment from the board. Jen? Sorry, I just have one correction that I noticed in there, Chris, that didn't make it from policy committee that we did discuss at length. And that would be on page um, 50 of your packet. It's the step three, Chris, the may to shall, if you want to talk about that. Do you remember that conversation? Right. Yeah. yeah. So what we want to clarify was um, the appeal procedure. Um, and just to have it create a certainty that, and we changed the may, the may to a shall, uh, so that the grievant who was going to appeal had a certain, so the policy created more certainty as to what they were supposed to do. Um, this doesn't, this isn't an exclusive route of, uh, route of appeal, um, but if they were going to appeal to the superintendent, this is what they needed to do, because we were concerned that may might seem too discretionary. And it didn't create enough certainty for the administration, for us, and also for the um, person who wanted to appeal. Lindy has her hand up, Chris. Oh, no, it's in. Who does? I'm sorry. I did. I do. Um, I just have a question because there's a, 
may in the first line and a shall in the next to the last line. So just to clarify which may or shall. Oh, I'm sorry. That's okay. Uh, the, the may, the shall is in the first line. The first line, if the agreement wishes to appeal in step two, he, she may submit. No, shall submit. At step three? Yep. Oh, am I on the wrong page? Yep. I think I didn't scroll down to the corrected page. Is that what I did? It wasn't corrected, Lindy. That was why oh. Jen was pointing it out. Okay. I thought she was saying, okay, now I get it. So that that first line is shall submit assigned. Thanks. Yes. I just yep. misunderstood. Thank you. Any other questions? Is this the first time we've had this policy? So this is like a first for us. Yes, this is a brand new policy from the VSBA. We do not have an existing policy, but this is a required policy through the VSBA. Thank you. Okay, um, next up is um, B5, which is um, policy for adoption. And it's the school, uh, the employee unlawful harassment policy. Is there any questions about it? Chris, I have one. Um, sure, Kyra. So the, the policy itself looks fine. Over the years, uh, this is an example of a, a concern of mine in the training section, um, where there, it's not just reactive, there is a requirement for proactive training. And how does the board know um, that this training is happening is sort of the question. So we monitor budget, we monitor academic achievement. What is the system for knowing that these sort of proactive requirements are happening um, other than people you know, raising raising an issue and we're also reacting to it. And, and that, that's just a question. I don't know if you've discussed that at all. Um, the way to know would be to incorporate a requirement of reporting um, that would, because it would be the superintendent who would be responsible for ensuring that training is happening and then reporting to us that it did happen. Um, that's a way for us to know that it did happen. And so we could amend the policy to require that superintendent report that the training has occurred on an annual basis and put in a, a um, like that during one of the monthly meetings and specify which one. That's the way to do that. Is that a proposed amendment? I don't know. <laughs> Lindy has her hand a, up too. No, sorry. It's a good point to, you know, you know, a lot of, a lot of our policies um, require things, but we don't know that they're actually happening. We, we rely upon the superintendent to ensure that they're happening, I guess. So, um, sorry. Who's, who's got their hand up? I can't see this. It was me. Lindy. And then Lindy. Um, so if this is a state requirement type training, is that, Jen, that it is? Yeah, and we are required to do training on um, on unlawful harassment every single year. And we have mechanisms to collect the data in terms of participation. Um, and you're right, we we haven't reported that to you, but we we do it as part of our annual training every single year. We collect the data. Uh, we have people uh, sign an attestation that they've done it, and um, we we could incorporate uh, some sort of monitoring if that would be helpful to the board. So it would be like the bloodborne pathogens and all those things that as teachers we do every fall. This would be one of those. We just haven't had it reported to the, that all state required safety trainings occurred during the PD days prior to school or whatever. That's right. Jen, can you just describe what the training is like is it set and is it uh, self-monitored or is it instruction type training where people gather in a certain location and go through the training 
So it has varied over the years. Um, sometimes it's been more self-directed in terms of uh, we'll develop slideshows in uh, collaboration with either the folks in the district who are leading the effort or legal counsel or both. And we'll create a slideshow and have and carve out time during the contracted day for people to complete the trainings. Other times, if we're noticing that there are topics that keep popping up, we'll do more in-person training. Or if we hadn't done the like in-person circle up training, we'll do that. Um, you know, if we hadn't done it in two or three years, we'll do it that way too. So it has varied. It's been a little bit of each, as um, as there are nuances to some of the laws. Either uh, we get guidance from the state that something has changed, or the way that we have done mandated reporting that requirement had changed, or um, Title 16, or something around universal precautions. All of those things then will highlight them more than we might for just the, the typical um, annual review of these practices. So it, it's a little of both and it depends on uh, changes and what seems to be rising to the surface the most. Uh, is there a, a date by uh, which the training must be done by? Yeah, so we always, uh, with a leadership team, establish the date. It's typically by the middle of September. What we've done in recent years is we've had people complete an attestation through a Google form so that we can monitor participation and follow up. Um, this coming year, we're looking at doing it through um, a, a different online module that, uh, that we use for supervision and evaluation in general. So, But we do have a systematic way to collect it with a deadline and with follow up. OK. Um, are board members satisfied with that explanation as to what the practice is? It sounds like the, has this been a practice? How long has the practice been in, in going for, on? for as long as I've been here, we've been doing this. I mean, many, many years. And based on your uh, history, um, do you see, do you think it's adequate in terms of getting the training done? I think that it's adequate as long as we also are building in time for some of the things that seem to surface more and more, right? Like we definitely have heard feedback, for example, outtake bloodborne pathogens that people don't need to have the practice with the EpiPen and the gloves and all of that hands-on every single year. And we've heard that people want more clarity around uh, reporting, bullying, hazing, and harassment, for example. And so we tailor our approach based on the needs that we're hearing, either because of things that we are experiencing administratively in the schools or because of feedback that we're getting from our staff. Okay, thank you. Um, so is there a sense from the board that um, this policy should be amended to include a uh, reporting time yeah. at a certain board meeting? So, Chris, before you ask the final question, we have Natasha and Daniel and Michaela oh, that had questions too. So <laughs> Natasha, and I know that you can't see them, so I'll just yeah. call them for you. Okay. Do that for okay. Natasha. Nata uh, thanks, um, Jen, you answered some of my question. Mine was going to be, I was curious about reasonable training program, um, knowing <laughs> just all the different trainings I'm in, especially around equity and the constant changing in vocabulary and the constant changing in what, you know, defines um, gender, what defines sexuality, you know, all of those things. So I'm curious as to like who creates the training program around the equity piece. Um, and is that one of those programs that kind of continues to be done throughout the school year as things are changing? So if I'm understanding you correctly, Natasha, I would say I would not I would not categorize equity training with our annual mandatory trainings because I think the equity training goes much deeper and takes a lot longer and a lot more um, sort of face to face engagement. So that plan um, to do some of that work around the continuous improvement plan that you all did earlier, we're looking at a a plan that could be many months, if not a full year to do those book groups that we're talking about. And that's one way to get into the equity work. It's not the only way. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Um, I mean, it. 
you know, considering that it's after all of these examples of unlawful, <laughs> um, you know, harassment, I, I just, I'm just, I'm just always very cognizant of, you know, whoever is going to be kind of dealing with the, um, the complaints that are coming in and doing the investigations are as up to date as possible on the changes that are happening with all of those kind of categories that are listed below um, and the nuances that are in there um, because depending on who that person is, you know, they just by default of who they are, <laughs> aren't necessarily going to be aware of, you know, of all the nuances and things um, or might not see something as, you know, harassment that is very apparent as harassment to the person who's being impacted by it. So I just, I just want to make sure that, that, that when it says, you know, reasonable training, that it's, that it's more than adequate training, but, you know, that we're really trying to cover all of our bases with that. Yeah, I think the one thing that I would, would add is that the annual mandatory trainings are like that baseline training for all of our employees. But if somebody is responsible for intake or investigation or decision making, those folks have more extensive training, well, apart from the annual mandatory training, right? Um, there are trainings that are offered um, frequently, either through VisBit or the Vermont Higher Ed Collaborative or we've employed legal counsel to come and provide some training for all of us who have more leadership roles around those issues. Okay, thank you very much. That answers my question. Uh, thank you, Natasha. Uh, Daniel? Hi, yeah, I had a question about the non-discrimination coordinators and just for clarification's sake, is there a single non-discrimination coordinator in each school? So this is something that we are gonna figure out um, together in the summer because with this policy and others, there are lots of um, there are lots of folks who are identified to do work and it's um, all slightly nuanced. And one of the improvements actually that I think that we can make is to be um, more public and maybe even on the website name clearly who is what role and why in our schools. It's one of the notes I've taken from this year. We include it in our annual mandatory trainings and we have that information in family handbooks and it would be probably helpful for the school system to have it all labeled uh, more prominently on our website. So um, I can't answer for you exactly right this second who that is gonna be. I can tell you that we'll make sure that it's published in time for the school year. Great. Yeah, that, that sounds like a great plan. I'm pleased to hear that. I also think that the policy as written sort of presumes um, maybe not infrequent situations where a designee is actually acting as the non-discrimination coordinator, which is concerning to me if it's a specialized role with specific training um, in a relatively sort of um, sensitive circumstance. So I guess, you know, however you mitigate that, I'm, I'm glad you're putting thought into that because I think it's it requires some some thought whether there's two people that are adequately trained and are sort of, you know, there's always basically a backup in place who has the adequate training and there's not just sort of a uh, an ad hoc designee. Um, that seems like a, a yeah, situation we... ripe for, for um, sort of deprivation of due process or, or something for, for a complainant. Yeah, we would ensure that the designee is adequately trained, for sure. We, we do now and we will continue to do that. Okay. Um, was there, I, I, there's someone else. Michaela. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to point out that age um, discrimination in Vermont is stricter than the federal guideline and it's anyone 18 or older based on Vermont's Fair Employment Practices Act. So we should probably change 40 to 18. Yes, we should to make you comply with the law. 
Terry. Thanks. I just wanted to respond to uh, Chris's question and clarify my earlier point. I, I don't think that we should uh, amend um, this particular policy in isolation um, with some kind of reporting. I think that we should think about this question of how do we as a policy board know, you know, sort of systematically and proactively that our policies are being executed as we uh, um, envision them. And think about that. We can think about that as a group, maybe in our retreat and maybe in our trainings over the course of the year. And we can also ask the policy committee to think about this issue as it's doing its work as our policy experts. And you're going through these individual policies and maybe in, in time, I think maybe the solution to this will emerge a little better. That would be my proposal. Thank you, Karen. So um, any other comments on this particular policy um, with the change to uh, on, on age discrimination number five to include eight to eight, any time 18 years or older. So it complies with Vermont law as well. Then do we have a motion? Do, Daniel, you is that an old hand or a new hand? Is it old oh, or yeah. new? It sounds like it's old. Okay. 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 So is there a motion to adopt B5? Well, isn't this a first reading? No. No? Okay. I didn't realize that. So this is Yeah, it's the third reading. Yeah. Jen. I'll just share with you all because this one we we needed our memories jogged a little bit on the policy committee as well. This was the one where the question had come up because originally it had just said um, it, it had said sexual harassment only, and you all raised that question specific to the training, which is why it went back to the policy committee for some more work, a little consult with legal, and um, and then it came back to you in the way that it did. So this is the second reading. And if we're voting to approve, is it with those changes, the 40 to 18, we don't have to do those and come back again? I don't believe we do. And so we're changing, the two changes would be the may to shall, although we had, that just didn't make it in, and then the 40 to 18. Go ahead, I'm sorry. No, just the 40 to 18. Yeah. Okay, we so, yeah, we need a motion. And you do you want to make the motion, Chris, to accept yeah. B? I move that we adopt um, a B5 employment unlawful harassment policy uh, with the change um, on page 53 or, or sub five for age to make the age 18 or older. With that change, that move that we adopt the policy. Thank you, Chris. Second. Thank you, Ursula. I think we had enough discussion. So all those in favor of approving, adopting policy B5, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries unanimously. Thank you, Chris. That, that was the end of policy, right? Yes, okay. it is. All right. Thank you to the policy committee. And let's move into the Education Quality Committee. And we have in page 58, our Global Citizenship Student Learning Outcome, Kari. Yeah, thanks. So this is an exciting moment because it's the final student learning outcome in this process that we started two years ago of um, going through basically our mission um, as, a, as a district and saying what we want our students to be proficient in by the time they leave. Um, U32. So um, we're going to um, hear about global citizenship and, and have a little bit of time to discuss maybe. So, Jen, are you ready? I'm ready. And um, many of you actually were in attendance at the, um, at the Ed Quality Committee meeting. The full presentation is in the packet. And um, when I was thinking about tonight, I didn't want to do like a super quick run through of it. What I thought I would do is talk to you about uh, when we distilled what the implications seem to be based on the information that's in that packet. All right. And those of you who are attendant, 
in attendance. I'll share what I pulled from that and you all fill in any, any gaps. But we, you know, we talked about that C3 framework. I think one important thing just to lead into this is that um, what we had originally articulated as standards in global citizenship has changed just like science. So we have three standards instead of five. That allows um, us some and our students some more flexibility to meet our expectations. Um, and I would say what the Ed Quality Committee was thinking were some key implications were first, um, you'll notice when you review the data that we have fewer sources of data in global citizenship than in um, many of our student learning outcomes. So really figuring out, um, finding ways to collect the data and show what our kids know um, so that we can uh, let them know and let their families and let our school community know as well. We talked about the fact that um, really these skills related to inquiry and analysis um, are lend themselves to being integrated more fully with literacy and mathematics, and that we need to continue to do that, especially in the elementary school where literacy and mathematics are the building blocks of the curriculum. Um, the board had, or the members of the Ed Quality Committee had also indicated interest in learning about um, from students directly what their interests are, um, what's important to them in their lives related to global citizenship. Um, so that we can continuously respond to knowing that um, in that arena, more than in many, um, there's a responsiveness to current events and making connections from history to current events that, um, that makes sense for us to be able to help our students process. Um, we talked a bit about time and values, that whole idea that um, if you look at the elementary schedule in particular, that there's a finite amount of time. We talked about that during the budget process as well, that uh, time is as much a resource as um, money is. And how do we allocate our, our time um, in alignment to the community's values? World language stood out as something for us to continue to be thinking about. It's, um, as you know, right now we offer world language and elementary Spanish program um, in one of our schools, elementary schools, and um, and only in one right now, and everybody comes to U32. Um, we talked about also, I think finally an implication was continuing, and this goes back to, I would argue, some of the equity conversation that we've had earlier tonight, but continuing to support our teachers so that they can have hard conversations with students. Um, you've heard that our students have said many times they want to engage in those hard conversations and they want teachers who feel comfortable facilitating them and knowledgeable. So that was an implication as well for us. And again, um, hopefully part of the way that we're structuring that professional learning for next year, it's going to help us do exactly that so that our students' um, outcomes are, are better and they're feeling more prepared to be engaged citizens in a respectful way and have hard conversations that need to be had. That would be what I would highlight. Anything I missed, anyone who was there? I think uh, one, one point that I got from our conversation is that there, to the point about time, there is a lot of synergy between global citizenship and literacy and math. And, you know, the, if, if students are have a good foundation in those, they will get more out of, of um, global citizenship and vice versa. And also that um, this is an area where there's a lot of richness and uh, um, it adds a lot to the curriculum and people's experience of school, I think, and help, also helps to make sense of current topics such as gun violence in America or war in Ukraine. And so that just is such a such an important part of our of our um, um, curriculum. So do, would anybody like to add anything from the committee or not any um, questions or comments about this student learning outcome? I don't see any. I guess just thank you and Jen uh, for putting this together and for taking us through this journey. This is important. I think it's something that we could do with policy too, and that would inform the community too. Just, but uh, uh, 
I, I didn't have any other thoughts on this one. Just the one thing that we did talk about, it's similar to what you just said, Kari, was that this is a living topic. And that's what is exciting about <laughs> this particular student learning outcome. So with that in mind, uh, just thanking both of you and the committee, the quality committee, and which is the best committee as far as I'm concerned for this important work for students. Uh, anything else for members? Otherwise, we we're gonna keep moving on. Trying, I was trying for 7.30, but it's definitely not gonna be 7.30. So uh, we're into our consent agenda. Hey, could I have a motion to approve the minutes and see the list that we have? Hopefully you had a chance to read them. So could I have a motion? I'll make a motion that we approve the minutes from May 18th, June 1st, and June 10th. Thank you. Second. Second. Thank you, Dennis. So moved by Kari, second by Dennis. Any discussion? Any amendments? Natasha. My name needs to be corrected. In one of the minutes, my last name is backwards. Did it get been... the hyphen? Yeah, so the hyphen oh, needs okay. to be removed, and in one of them, it's it's banning Eckhart instead of Eckhart banning. Okay. Lisa, did you get that? I see you, but I, yes, she's got it. Okay. Sorry. Thank yes, you. I will correct that. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. If all of those if signified by saying aye, approving our minutes as amended. Aye. 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 Um, any opposed? Hearing none, the minutes carry unanimously. Or orders. Lindy. They came separate. So yes, I have them. I just couldn't get unmuted. Okay. Um, I make a motion okay. to approve the board orders in the total amount of Five hundred eighty-nine thousand one hundred thirty-four dollars one cent. Second. Thank you. Okay, second by Diane. Any questions? Okay, seeing none. All those in favor of approving the board orders, please signify by saying aye. 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 Thank you. Any opposed? Any abstain? Being on the motion carries. Thank you. And now, exciting, let's move into personnel. Wendy. All right. Um, I make a motion to accept the new teacher nominations of Pamela Mallet for Callis, Christina Snook, Doty, Andrew McCarthy, Callis Rumney PE Health, Sarah Lund, U32. Rebecca Sweeney, U32. Thank you, Lindy. Second. I have a, thank you, Ursula. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, I see the yes check in all heard all eyes. So the eyes have it. The new hire. Uh, yeah, or, I, I yeah. wasn't. Oh, I guess because it's not a it's teacher, separate, it's a different position. Yeah, yeah. That's why. It's a different All position. right. Yeah. Um, the new hire nomination for Derek Dunning as the U32 Athletic and Activities Director. Thank you. Could I have a second? Second. Thank you, Ursula. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none. The eyes have it. Um, okay. I make a motion to, to accept retirement of Roger Grove, U32 music teacher. Thank Second. you, Lindy. Thank you, Ursula. That was you? Yeah. No, sorry. Natasha, sorry. Right. Could we add with appreciation? Certainly. Yeah. 
Yes. This appreciation to the many, many, many years. And we are singing that to you, Roger, in mm -hmm. a good voice, which I don't have, but thank you. <laughs> okay, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries. You will be missed, Roger. All right. Okay, I make a motion to accept the resignation of Sarah Yurt, U32 special education teacher. And a second. Second. Thank you, Ursula. All of those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries unanimously. Okay. Um, okay. I make a motion to accept the extended leave of absence request for uh, J.B. Hilferty, the uh, U32 middle school social studies teacher. Second. That was you, Michaela, you're, yeah, All right. I have a question yeah, here. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so is Chris. it, yeah, what's, um, just explain the yeah, inter yeah. interrelationship between number five and number eight, where JB is going to be US, uh, U32 Dean of Students. I'm happy to do that. So JB has been a longtime middle school social studies um, teacher. The Dean of Students position is open and JB he is really interested in exploring that position, um, looking at just uh, issues of school culture and some proactive work to do, in addition to some of the reactive or responsive work that a dean of students needs to do. Um, and it would be a brand new position. Um, and so for him, and there, although I think he's going to love it and do an amazing job, also taking a leave of absence from his social studies position for next year allows him the flexibility to return to the classroom as a social studies teacher should the dean of students position not work out. So we would be supportive of this, uh, of this move for him. I think it, um, it's, it's a great move for the system and it's a Supportive of a longtime employee to, to allow this uh, leave of absence to happen. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Jen. So let's do this one motion that we have in front of us right now uh, to accept the leave, the extended leave of absence. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries. Thank you. So let's do the long term and then we'll move into that number eight. Yeah. I make a motion to accept the long term substitute recommendation from Maxwell Sagala, U32 Social Studies long term sub. Thank you, Lindy. A second. Dennis, thank you. All right. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Seeing or hearing none, the motion carries. Okay, now in the change of position, Dean. I'll make a motion to accept the change in position recommendation for J.B. Hilferty to U32 Dean of Students. And a second, I hear a second there, but I don't know the name of that little guy. I think Daniel's got that second in. Okay, Daniel. <laughs> oh, really my nice second, yeah. Oh. <laughs> I love that thought. That's great. All right. Daniel seconds. And with excitement, we accept, I think, also agree that JB will be phenomenal and the kids will be so lucky to have him. So all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries. And I see that I'm putting half of you asleep already. We're almost done, guys. So... Updates and vacancies. So we are continuing to advertise. We are continuing to experience some vacancies, especially in special education. And so I wanted the reason that we included that middle school interventionist job description in there is 
um, because I had told you at least two meetings in a row that we were starting to try to be a little bit more creative about how to meet our students' needs when we keep advertising for special educators and having zero applicants. And so we advertised and you just approved a middle school interventionist. Um, Act 173 provides us the flexibility to provide to, um, to meet some of our students' needs uh, in ways that are not tip, uh, directly provided by a special educator when that's not what a student needs or it's not what's called for in an IEP. So we put that in there. We've had middle school interventionists and we've in the past, we recently, our classroom teachers have done more of the intervention um, at the middle school level than people who are strictly interventionists. And we have had a job description and it was lost in the um, ransomware attack. So we created a new one in the template for you. That's why that's in there. Not because we're asking you to have approve a job description. It had been approved a number of years ago. Um, that being said, we're, we're still trying to be creative. We have a number of special ed vacancies, again, primarily at U32. Um, we still have one special ed vacancy at Berlin Elementary School. We have uh, one and a half uh, speech language pathologist vacancies. So we're, we're uh, continuing to advertise and we're continuing to figure out how might we ensure that we can meet all of our students' SLP needs. We have a, an open literacy interventionist position at Berlin still. We have a classroom teacher, grade five, six at Doty that remains unfilled and we have a number of paraeducator positions that remain unfilled. So we keep advertising, we keep refreshing, um, and we're advertising in lots of different places and uh, we're remaining hopeful, but those are the vacancies as of June 15th. Thank you, Jen. Any questions from board members? Uh, seeing none, uh, let's move on. I'm gonna skip uh, future agenda items and moving to board reflection today. I mean, board reflections. I wanted to potentially use this time since this is our not our last meeting with Jen because she would be part of very many meetings with us, but it's our last meeting with Jen as our interim superintendent. Uh, we'll probably have other things going on next week, but since we didn't get to get together this week, I just wanted to uh, use this time to reflect on how lucky we have been to have you uh, with us and that sense of, you know, of a uh, peace that you brought uh, to our school district in a very tumultuous time for our district, uh, just not just the pandemic, but so much going on. And you immediately uh, brought that uh, warmth, that inclusion of everybody and have provided a, a solid leadership with a very kind heart to all our communities. So I want to use that time to thank you on behalf of the board. And board members, feel free to use your reflection time. I'm just glad she's not going anywhere. <laughs> I, I said earlier looking tonight. Looking forward to many more um, years. I see that my yeah. Sorry, can I go? Go ahead. Um, I, I just want to say I, I, earlier tonight I said, and you weren't there, Jen, but I think this was a much more difficult year than the previous year in a lot of ways for a lot of different reasons, and um, and you probably had the hardest job of all um, in any in a, anybody I know, and you did it. You pulled it off so well so with so much grace and um just really appreciate what you did for us overall and what you did um for us individually i really appreciated working with you learned a ton from you and um really looking forward to next year when you can do the work that you prefer to do thanks so with that and a round of applause for jen we can motion to adjourn and thank you. Hopefully you get a little walk after today or something. It's still sunny out there, guys. So 
I make a motion that we adjourn. Second. Thank you, Lindy. Yeah. Thank you, Jonas. You got that, Lisa? Okay, thank you everybody for making this happen today. We'll see you next week at our training. All right. Okay. Thanks. Thank Thanks. you. Good night. Bye. Good, Good night. night. Good night. Good night. Bye. Night.